Right. And the reason why it's tricky, ladies and gentlemen, is we know that we have a right circular cone, right? So we know that we're going to be dealing with the volume equal to 1 third pi r squared h, right? Okay. And we know that we have a couple rates. We see that water is being pumped in. Is that two minutes? So we know that um, dv dt is 2 is 2 per minute. Right? So therefore, we have a rate. So therefore, we know that we're going to have to go ahead and find the derivative. right? But there's an issue if we're going to want to find the derivative here of this function. And part of what we came up with is when we took the derivative of this for our warm-up problem, right? Um, what we found out was we had the product rule. right? And we found, and we had to, when we did the product rule, we had h and we had r, in addition to dr dt, as well as in addition to dh dt. Actually, could tell me, somebody tell me what the derivative of this was? I, we did it earlier, so dv dt was equal to 1 third pi, um, what is it, or it was 2 thirds pi r h plus 1 third pi r squared dh dt, right? Is that what I had? Or dr dt, right? I got to have my dr dt. Yeah. Dr dt h. OK, so that's what happened when we took the derivative, right? We had to use the product rule. But there's an issue with this. Because when you guys start plugging in, we know dv dt, right? What is it we're trying to find where the water's being pumped at, um, to this, find the rate at which the water level is rising? So we want to find the h dt, right? Um, and we know that it has a diameter of equal to 4 meters, a height of equal to 4 meters. Well, again, guys, what is a, remember 2r is equal to diameter? Yes? Right? The diameter is just double the radius. Um, so therefore, r is equal to 2 meters. So we know r. Cool. So let's look at this. We kind of know r. Uh, we know h. We know dv dt. We're looking for dh dt. But the problem is, at the height that we're looking for, wait, no, I'm sorry. That is dr dt. We know d, eight, dv dt. This is dr dt. When the height, or find the rate at which the water is leveling when it is 3 meters deep. So we know. We know at what derivative we want to find the water level, right? When it's, so when it's, we're looking at the change when it's at 3 meters deep. The problem is, guys, do we have anything for r or dr dt? Like when it's at 3 meters deep, do we know what the radius is? We know what the initial radius is, right? But once you fill in water and it, and it has a height of 3 meters, do we know what the radius is? No, we have no idea. Do we know at what rate the radius is changing? No. So even though this is, even though we found the derivative, right, we have too many unknowns. We don't have enough information, right? So if you guys remember, what we did in the other problems is we looked at like other relationships that we had, and like for instance, and in the triangle, we used the Pythagorean theorem to find the height because the height wasn't given to us, right? So we use that, and we're going to kind of use the same thinking for this problem. So even though this is correct, it's not going to get us where we want to go. What we want to do is let's look at this relationship of our r and our h. All right? And what we can do is we can create a, a relationship. Just like a triangle has a relationship a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can say that the ratio of our radius to our height is equal to 2 to 4. Would you guys agree that's at least a that's a ratio if you're looking at there. Director Lurelli, two sorry. So we can create a ratio of a radius to our height is equal to two to four, and therefore I can say four h is equal to or four r is equal to two h. <coughs> divide by four, divide by four. R is equal to h over two. Now, why would I want to do this? Why is that going to help me out? Well. If I go back to this formula, 
91 third pi. Remember, we didn't have r or we didn't have dr dt, right? At the final l at when it's three meters deep, we do not have r and we do not have dr dt. So wouldn't it make sense to kind of get rid of r? Not really get rid of it, but replace it with a relationship. So if I replace r with h over 2 squared, remember those are equivalent. r is equivalent to the height divided by 2. Now I kind of have a whole different equation. I have the same relate, I have the same like relationship, but now this relationship is in terms of h instead of in terms of the height and the radius. And that's very, very helpful because now v equals 1 third pi h cubed. Actually, let's just rewrite it like this. 1 over, oh, let's do it, pi over h cubed over 4. And then you guys could multiply um, those out. So v equals 1 twelfth pi h cubed, right? So now, that's something easier. Can I find the derivative of this? Yeah, this isn't too bad, guys. dv dt, or take everything with respect to t, is going to be 3 twelfths, because you're multiplying 3 times 1 twelfth, pi h squared. And that obviously reduces to dv dt equals 1 fourth pi h squared. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> dh dt, right? Do not forget. Do not forget the chain rule. Be very careful with that. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit low on my thing. But does everybody see? Does everybody see how I did that, or what I did? Anybody have any questions on what I did or how I did? Where did I get the three? Power rule. Brought the three down, right? And then subtracted one. That's how I got the squared. But just remember, you got to do dht, which I inevitably forgot right there. Okay. All right, so now let's just kind of work back over here and let's finish the problem. So again, we have dv dt, which we know, we have our rate, um, is equal to 1 fourth pi. We know what the h is, because um, again, wait, I'm sorry. We're trying to find, hold on, let's go back to what we're looking for again. We're looking for dh dt when h is equal to 3, right? And that's another thing, too, guys, actually, when you go back and look into this problem, if you guys actually think about this, and then you actually, we probably could have done that. We kind of know this earlier. Remember I told you last class period to say, like, hey, find what is it you're looking for, right? And find when you're looking for that value. So if you guys automatically would have said, oh, I'm looking for dh dt, the change in the height, right? I'm sorry, yeah, the change in the height when the, find the water level is rising, find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is three. Yeah, so find the rate at when it's changing when the height is 3. So what's important about that is we have no mention of radius, and we have no information on radius. So immediately from right there, I could be thinking, I need to find another relationship to replace my r. Does that kind of make sense? Like That's my thinking process going in through there. All right, so again, that's what we're looking for. So if I need to solve for dh dt, you guys would agree with me that dh dt can mathematically just be rewritten as dv dt all over divided by 1 fourth pi h squared. Right? And basically just dividing on both sides. Right? So therefore, dh dt is equal to dv dt, which is 2, divided by 1 fourth pi. And then we have our h squared, which is going to be 3 squared. Oh, I don't know why I put that. That's going to be our 9. And if we just go ahead and simplify this, we get 2 over 9 fourths pi. We usually don't like to write fractions in the denominator, so I'll multiply by the reciprocal. And dh dt is equal to 8 over 9 pi. 
and we have to And just remember to include your degree. And then think about this. Again, we're looking at volume. Remember, volume is having a cubic measurement, right? Area has a squared measurement. And this is just talking about height, which is just going to be a linear measurement. So it's going to be your meters per time. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that one? Yes.